This is uh, Terry with Trout Unlimited out of Madison, Wisconsin. We're here at Cabela's again. Going to do a couple of flies tonight. And uh, first thing we're going to do is a Charlie Boy Hopper. And this fly was uh, developed by a, a famous guide and tire named Charlie Craven out of Colorado. And it's, it's a foam fly. Um, on it. So I've laid my thread down. And then I'm going to take a piece of two millimeter craft foam. Now this is three-eighths of an inch thick, uh, wide. You can go up to a quarter of an inch, but this is three-eighths of an inch wide. And I have it in green. You can do these in yellow, green, tan, uh, brownish. And if you want to do um, crickets, do, do them in black. Okay. So I put my foam on. And then I'm going to take my hook and put it in the middle of the foam and leaving about oh two thirds of a half an inch of foam out the back. Now you can put the foam on first if you want to. I find it a little awkward so I try to do it this way. And then get it back in the hook and you want your thread on the back side like this. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is make a hole for my eye. So I'm going to take my bodkin or my scissors and just poke a little hole so it slips through easily and it's going to come on like that. Okay. Now what we're going to do is put on a real thin layer of super glue. And that's meant to hold the foam together. And I'm not going to put any on the back where the tail is going to be because we're going to end up cutting that and I don't want the glue on my scissors. So I'm going to put a little bit on the top here, a little bit on the side, you don't need a lot, and just a little bit back by the hook like so. Next thing I'm going to do is make an eye. And Charlie paints the eye on, but what I do with it is take my two millimeter craft foam and just cut it square so it's pretty much two millimeters all the way around. And then I take my foam to make my eye, put it up by the hook, get it up there nice and tight but make sure that your eye is open. Get my body squared on here and pinch it down for a minute and just get the glue to set up. And when you're done it should look something like that. Then I can come in here and trim my eyes off. I try to leave a little bit sticking out so that my eyes are come out and look something like this. That one's maybe just a little too much. Okay. Now I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to bring it around. This will be the back part of the body of the hopper. And I like to pinch the foam so I don't cut it. And I'm going to make two or three wraps to make a segment. Okay. Then I'm going to take the thread and I'm going to go over the top at a forward maybe oh an eighth of an inch or so and make my next segment. And then I just keep progressing all the way up until I get up where my head's going to be. Make a couple wraps there like so. Now so all my wraps are hidden on top. Now for the back part you can uh, cut it at some different angles or something if you want to make it look prettier, but I just cut it off straight so I have a back part of the body. Okay. The next thing I want to do is put on my legs. And what I'm going to use are round rubber legs. These happen to be green, but you can get them in a lot of different colors. And then I take my strip and I figure out how long I want my legs to be and I cut a whole strip off. So I actually have a strip about so wide, but I've used quite a few of them. And I'm going to take these off in, in groups of two. Okay. Now, being wrapped up, these legs might have a little bend to them, so I'm going to try to make sure the bends so the legs are pointing out. Okay, and pull them on the side right in the middle. Take a couple wraps around like so. Bring the thread over the top. Secure the back part of the legs like so. A couple wraps is fine. 
And if you want to move them around, now's a good time to do it. Maybe you want your back legs a little longer than your front legs, like so. Now for the other side, I'm just going to repeat the process. I'm going to take two legs. I'm going to try to line them up pretty close to the other ones. I'll adjust them here in a second. A couple of wraps over the top, a couple of wraps. I'm going to get my legs centered pretty much between the uh, edging of the foam. See, they're pretty much evened out, so they're in good shape right now. Now you can do this part later if you want, but what you're going to do with these legs are split them with your bodkin or your scissors, go between the two, right up to the body. And the reason I'm doing this is to get a little better wiggle out of the fly. Now you can put these on singly if you want to, if you prefer it that way. This is just another way of doing it. But you want to make sure that split goes all the way to the body so that they're really going to wiggle around for you. Okay, and then we're going to do the last plate. And then we can adjust them and make sure they're about where we want them to be. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my wing. And uh, you can use a lot of different things for wings if you want to, but what I'm going to do is just use some one inch millimeter craft foam. And I haven't found these in craft stores, you're going to have to order it through Cabela's or someplace. But this is actually one millimeter craft foam. Instead of the two, it's one millimeter. And I'm going to put this on is right back by the head. So I'm going to lay it on the back so I can grab it. A couple of wraps like so. Now this one, if you want, you can cut it off square. Measure out how long you think you want your wing to be. If you want to, you can dip the corners off and make it a little more round. But the next thing I'd like to do with this to secure it is put just a very, very little bit of super glue on that second or third body part segment. And the reason for that is just to hold it down and hopefully the fly will last a little longer. And it'll set up while we're working. Uh, the next thing I want to do, if I'm going to make this look kind of pretty, or you want some more flash with it, is use some crystal flash. And what I've done is picked out a number of them. I don't know how many are here, 10 or something like that. And cut them all to length. And then I looped them and tied them in a knot so I can work with them very easily. And then I can just take, instead of messing with one at a time, I've got a whole bundle here that I can use. And I'm just going to put that right on top of the of the um, wing. I like to bring it back over a little bit to secure it in more so that those fibers won't fall out. Then I'll come in here and trim the, the hack off like so. Now, if you want to, you can put a drop of head cement right in here or a little bit of super glue, but don't overdo it. Now, the thing I want to do is put my overwing on. I have my underwing in, and for that, I'm going to use some just some plain deer hair. Uh, you could use elk hair or something if you wanted to, but we're just going to use some deer hair. And it's your option whether or not you want to stack it because it doesn't have to look totally pretty. If you have any luck in cutting it off, you could just stack it like this. The other option is to put it in the stacker and even them up a little more. I'm going to put several wraps around it like so. Okay. And then I'm going to come in here, trying not to cut your legs off, and trim that just behind the head. Get myself a little bit of uh, 
slack and we can whip finish it you can do half hitches and just half hitch it right on your spot where you're tying your hair in I'm just going to do one to save time nip that off 